evening. Welcome to Tax Feet à la Carte. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for all of you who's watching. Do not forget to like the live, share the live, share the love, people. Mm -hmm. Today we have um, an amazing guest. She took time out of a busy schedule to share with us her experience with infertility. So we are very fortunate and grateful to have you here Thank with you. us. Um, please help me give a, well, a warm welcome to Paola Council. Hi. Did I say that right? You did. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. give a lot of hearts to the video. Yes. <laughs> All right, so tax fit a la carte. Mm -hmm. Why we have this show, it's because um, my dad always said that knowledge is power. They can take away from you everything that you have, your money, your dignity, mm -hmm. everything. But what you have in your head, you're going to go to the grave with that. So um, I wanted to share back with the community. And I said, what, why not invite people here, individuals that I think that are so amazing, that oh. have something to share, and then they can learn from that since we are in the social media era, yeah. right? <laughs> Some so, of us a little more than others. <laughs> <laughs> so we have been doing this for the past two years. We had amazing people sitting at this table, and we tried to have people from different line of work, different things. Different experiences. Yes, yeah. because I feel in this, in this country, in this world, where everybody is plugged in in their little world, mm -hmm. they, 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 they don't have the time to really go in other yeah. people's and get world. To, and get to know people, actually get yes. to know people, what they've been through. Exactly. Yeah. And the human experience is like priceless. Yeah. So before we grill you with a lot of questions, <laughs> Paula, and thank you for coming here for talking about a difficult subject. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you for having me. We want to explain to them how they can win the taxi pay the light bill today. So how you win is very simple. You need to like the live, Share the live, comment, 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 comment. Towards the end of the show, Paola is going to choose a random number and we are going to match that number with a comment entry. And that person will have 24 hours to inbox us um, their electricity bill, the last four of their social, and the phone number associated with the bill. Now, the bill needs to be yours. <laughs> <laughs> it cannot be your... Um, neighbor's bill because um, if you want your neighbor to win so tell them to like the live share the live you know the all the thing I see the back team is saying oh hi from Switzerland hi. by the way this is a country I want to visit oh it's beautiful I heard oh you were you, I would love to oh. go I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> I would love to go anywhere anybody wants to take me, but... Yes, I love traveling. <laughs> so do I. I'm I, going to Paris in two weeks. Oh, really? My mom amazing. Is me My mother is I, amazing. I, I want to do, like... All of Europe. The, the world. Take a month. World tour. And just go. I saw, like, um, a, a cruise that oh. goes around the world for a year. Oh, that's amazing. But I'm amazing. like, oh, my God, that, all that you can eat for a year? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more nervous about that. all I can drink for a year, but... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> So anyway, guys, um, yes, please like the live, share the Absolutely. live, share the love. And before we start with talking about infertility, there is more people going through this that you may imagine. And Paola today is going to share with us her journey. That is not over, by the way. It's not. Okay. So we're going to, we believe here at Tax Fit in motivation and positivity. So we're going to share with you the positive segment of the day tell me what you think comment 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 <laughs> <laughs> these challenges that you face they're gonna do their best to take you these challenges that you face they're gonna do their best to take you down. Do not let them. Stand up, dig in. Line up those problems and confront them, face them, fight them. Do not 
let them bring you down. In fact, let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let their demands and their trials make you stronger. Let the adversity you face today turn you into a better person tomorrow. What they don't understand is that even when you are expecting something good to happen, it costs you something. And when you keep wanting something that keeps evading you, if you're not careful, it will wear you down. To wait for something, anticipating it and it doesn't happen, costs you more than somebody who wants nothing. That's why we have so many people who fall into the abyss of wanting absolutely nothing because sometimes it is easier not to want anything than it is to want it and not get it. Some people find it easier to just give up and lay dead and just let things happen the way they happen. They are perpetually and inevitably victims of circumstances. They've allowed themselves to be typecast into a perpetual role of nothingness. I may not have it, but I want it. I, I may not be there, but I want to. It may not be in my hand, but I'm snatching after it. I may not have apprehended, but I'm in the press. I may not climb the mountain, but I'll die with dirt in between my fingernail because I will never lay there and accept where I came from to be where I'm going. I will break you before you break me. You will not defeat me. You will not destroy me. Some of you are so ignorant. You've been through so much hell. You gonna quit now? You should have quit 10 years ago. You should have quit 10 years ago when he walked out on you. You should have been quit. You don't quit now. It's the 10th round. You got two more to go. And when you get to success, it's not about skill. It's about stamina. Welcome back. Isn't that amazing? Every morning we listen to something positive. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes. So what is your take on that? Well, I think it's interesting that, you know, they say, you know, if you don't have expectations, you're not disappointed. It's easier to be in, going through life if you don't have expectations because you can never be disappointed. But if you don't have expectations, what do you have to live for? Shouldn't you always be working to achieve certain things in life, either that's better yourself, some people find success in material things, families. I mean, whatever is your goal, you're going to be disappointed sometimes. That's the reality of life. But that doesn't mean that you should just coast along and not have any expectations because you're always going to be at the same spot. Exactly. You're exactly. always going to be at the same spot. You're never going to be better for yourself. Not for everybody else, but for yourself. I like um, when they said that people that do not want anything are dangerous mm -hmm. because they can fall for anything and, and they have nothing <laughs> to lose exactly and when you have nothing to lose you're willing to do anything that which, that's right that's right yeah it means you have no to me it means you may not have as many morals and you're not afraid to hurt people or care for people or love people because you have nothing to lose well i think that people should have goals yeah. it's important absolutely that help you have a sense of purpose and that's why so many people they are depressed nowadays because they have nothing to look forward. Yep. Um, every time someone tell me that <clears throat> they are depressed, I said, go. Do what you can control. Sign up for a Spanish class, for a mm -hmm. German class. Do something. Yeah. Have a goal. Go towards something. And, and, and that help it helps you. It helps purpose. your mental state. Mm. I think it's also important, though, to like when you do feel sad, to take a little bit of that time to, to figure out why you're sad or why you feel the way you feel. So then you can bounce that and be even more better and have better goals and bigger goals because you don't want to be at that spot. So I think it's normal to be a little sad sometimes when things don't happen the way you want them to happen. It's when you linger in that and make it your whole life and then you become negative and then everything negative happens because your outlook is negative. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yep. So in a few words, who is Paola Council? Oh. Um, I don't know in a few words. I know there's a lot of layers to everybody, <laughs> including me. I, I'm 
39 years old and I been in Florida three years and I'm a family oriented type of person. I love being with my family and friends and I don't know, I guess I consider myself a good person overall. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's funny because my family always joke about me. I always say, I'm a fair person. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny what, you know, we see ourselves as. I never know how to describe myself because I think sometimes maybe negatively about myself more than what I put out. But I think I'm a pretty good person overall. I try to be anyway. <laughs> awesome. So, and fertility. Oh. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about your story? Um, yeah. Um, when did you discover that? I was about 15 and I went to, you know, the GYN that you do when you're, you know, a teenager and I was having some issues and they said to me, you know, pretty much looks like, you know, when you get older, you're going to have some issues, you know, getting pregnant. And I never really thought about it. I mean, you're 15. I'm not trying to have a baby. At well, you shouldn't be trying to have a baby when you're 15. If you, that's a whole other problem. But um, when I got older and um, I got to the age where I wanted to have a baby, you know, I got worked up and I was found out I was born without ovaries. They call them streak ovaries. Um, I had to go through all this genetic testing, chromosomal testing. They very abnormal to not be born with them and have everything else. Um, so... That's what it is. I don't have any ovaries, which means I don't have any eggs, which means can't have a baby without eggs. Um, everything else is good, though. Um, I got the full workup, and I have everything I need. It's just that's how I found out, basically, and it's, it's a tough one. So tell me a little bit, like, um, so what have you tried? Well, so at the beginning, you knew you were going to have some problems. Yes. But... You didn't care that much at that no, time. No, you know, no, because you know, I wasn't getting married. I, you know, I really didn't really think I was going to get married. I met my husband when I was 34, mm. and at that point, you know, you're 34. All your friends are married and have kids already. You know, you're like the single one. You know, still living the single life. And then I met my husband. Oh, hi, Rodney. And um, <laughs> you know, he kind of changed my mind and what my life was going to be. You know, okay. I just thought I wasn't going to get married and I wasn't going to have that. So I met Rodney and that changed. So and what was his reaction knowing that maybe? Uh, well, the conversation is very awkward. <laughs> to have, just so you know, it's not a pleasant conversation to tell somebody, you know, you're falling in love with that, you know, it's pretty much going to be difficult. It's impossible to have a baby of your own biologically. Um, I told him pretty much early on in the relationship because I felt like, well, here's his out, you know, so he can't say I never told him. Um, but he was exactly how you want your significant other to be, to be honest with you. Like he never was angry or thought less of me, which honestly, you do think that people are going to look at you like, oh. Well, poor Paula, mm -hmm. you know, she can't have a baby, and you don't want that. Oh, well, I don't want that, I should say. Um, and he never did. He never, he was like, okay, we'll figure it out. Awesome. And yeah. That's how, that's how that <laughs> works. I said, I'm, I'm on your side. Yes. We're yeah. going to go fight this together. He's my support system, even though I want to kill him sometimes. So from <laughs> that point on, so what did you start doing? So when you decided you so want to have a baby So basically we had to find an endocrinologist, a fertility endocrinologist. And basically because I need a donor, um, I had to get a full workup myself, which included blood tests, genetic testing, a lot of down there issues that you had to go. My husband had to do testing um, and we had to get every test under the sun, you know, every STD, every genetic testing, just to make sure that if we did get pregnant, it would be a healthy baby. Um, what I didn't realize is they consider a donor egg as a, uh, like a, like a kidney transplant. Oh, wow. Same thing. You have to go through the same FDA testing. Wow. You all, you have to be fully worked up. Your donor has to be fully worked up because they consider it under the FDA laws as a transplant. Um, so you have to lose weight. You have to be not drinking. You have to be all these things. And it's hard because I'm like, 
my doctor tells me you have to lose 40 pounds. You have to stop drinking. I'm like, fat drunk people get pregnant all the time. Why do I have to do it? Why am I the one who has to do it? I always think about that when people realize they're pregnant sometimes it's three, four months later. Yeah. And they were drinking they all were the time. Drinking, smoking, <laughs> and, but, you know, it's, it's different when it's not a natural, shall we say, mm -hmm. you know, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to do all that. And we, thank God, came through it and everything on that aspect is good. So really the only thing that we're missing are the eggs. So tell me about a little bit how exactly going to happen. So are they going okay. to fertilize the egg so, outside? How that goes? So basically once we pick a donor, mm -hmm. uh, once the donor presents to herself that we in, want and like, um, they start an IVF process. Mm -hmm. they, we're doing what they call a fresh donor. So there's two types of donor, a frozen donor and a fresh donor. Um, so they'll do a two-month IVF process. And then while they're doing their IVF process, I will be doing hormonal therapy to mm -hmm. get my body ready for the transplant. Because like I said, they consider it a transplant. Okay. So once she goes through her IVF process and they take the follicles out, um, it's a three to five day process. They will implant the sperm, which it would be my husband's sperm, and they will fertilize those follicles and they take the best, let's say five. And per my doctor, they put in the ones they feel are the most aggressive. So they, that's exactly his word, aggressive. <laughs> so if there's one that's super aggressive and gonna hang on, he's gonna put one in. If he finds that, you know, there's one or two that are, he will put more than one because the whole point is for the pregnancy to take. Um, so you have a risk of multiple pregnancies. Yes, definitely a risk of multiple pregnancy. I mean, my husband might run out the door because <laughs> he only wants one baby. And me and my mother-in-law and my aunt, we're, my aunt always are like triplets. Like oh. we're going to have triplets. And he's like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there is that, that chance. But honestly, one, I would be okay. <laughs> Yeah, it, it really might be more than one. Really, yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for that? I'm okay with that. that. <laughs> You're done. Done after yeah, that. One, one, one. Okay, okay. So how is that going? So now you're looking for a donor? So right now we're in the process of looking for the donor um, and also the process of getting the funds together. You know, there's no, insurance does not cover any aspect of it. The, they cover some of the testing, um, but the actual procedures, it's all out of pocket and you know it's upward of 30,000 or more um, wow. a lot of places don't do payment plans or they don't you know, wow. you have to take out a loan if you want to do it um, so it, it's a lot just not emotionally you know uh, on just the aspect of having a child it's the financial aspect of it do you go in debt trying to have a baby yeah, I was showing your GoFundMe page to my oh, assistants. Yeah. And they're like, maybe we should donate some eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you were, tell you the truth, I when my cousin who put up the GoFundMe uh, page, thank you, Dara, um, put it up, I had actually people reach out to me, people I had known throughout my life. Um, when a girl I went to college with, uh, another woman that I met twice, um, you know, privately inboxed me and said, you know, we love you. We you know, you meant this to me and I want to give this to you. And, you know, it's just crazy to me how the generosity of people, I mean, somebody I hadn't seen in 15 years to reach out to me and say, I, I love you and I want to give this to you. And it's like, me? Like, why? Like, you, you just, it's awesome. It's awe-inspiring. Like, it really is. Just yes. the generosity of people. Unfortunately, I need young eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was a little bit older. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that there it goes again, you know, where things that happen natural in nature, you know, unfortunately don't work when you're trying to do it this way. No. So, did you always want a big family? Oh, yeah. I wanted six children. I wanted five. <laughs> <laughs> well, I come, do you come from a big family? No, we are three. Three? We're six. But the, the, the parents, my dad, have five siblings. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, big family. I yeah. come from a big family, and family's everything. To I me, know. you know, it brings you joy, brings you pain, brings you everything. Everything in life you can get out of your family, you know? So, but my husband only wants one. <laughs> I want five, he wants one. Okay, so we're going to compromise in the middle. Compromise in the middle, Roddy, triplet. 
<laughs> oh my god, I cannot wait for you to have those triggers. <laughs> it's gonna pass out. But uh, yeah, I always wanted a big family. It's nice. So how long you have been on this journey trying to get um, pregnant? We've been pretty much on it since January. Um, you know, finding a donor has been a little bit harder than anticipated. Um, one of the things that I, you know, when you pick a donor, it's like going to the store. Oh my God. Literally, my doctor says, tell me what eye color you want. Tell me what hair color you want. Do you want a tall person? Do you want a short person? Do you want a heavy person? Do you want somebody? It's crazy. I didn't even think about those things. I just wanted a donor. <laughs> I just wanted somebody to be like, here's the egg. But those are the things that can you Can you, you decide the IQ? You can. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's you it. can. You can say you want somebody with this IQ level and a college degree or a PhD or you want somebody from California with blue eyes. I mean, you can put <laughs> anything you want, you know, as long as you have the money to do that. Because the more specific you are, the more expensive it gets. So it's a business, too, in that aspect, you know? It's, yeah. You know, they know what they're doing, too. Well, guys, um, if there are some of you out there that's going through the same thing, oh. infertility, and wants to ask questions. This Please is your know. chance. Please. This is a two-way street. It's a conversation. You're not alone. I think a lot of people don't talk about it enough <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's, you know, a woman, we're just supposed to have kids. In the end, you know, we can be successful in all those things, but a lot of women want to have that and can, and they don't talk about it, you know, for various reasons. Oh. Definitely. Kids are a blessing. Yes. In any, any situation, kids are a blessing. I believe in my heart. That's you know? true. I think they bring a joy and a light to any situation. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha is saying, this is better than picking my baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, you are so funny. You know it that? better. Trust me. <laughs> Let's see. So, what, out, what advice would you give to women out there in the same situation? Um, faith mm -hmm. is the most important thing to have because I think there's gonna be disappointment. I think it's just part of the process for a lot of people. I have a lot, actually a few friends that have been through it and have had disappointments and it's hard even when you're a faithful person when it's something that you really desire so much mm -hmm. to continue to have faith. I think one of the things that I struggled with was shame. Talking about it was always kind of well, too a difficult. Why, why would you say you have shame? I mean, it's not your fault. You were born like this. I think it's shame in that, and maybe it's, a, I don't know if it's a culture thing, a woman thing, I don't know, but you know, women, that's what we're supposed to do in the end. I don't care how successful you are, how confident you are, how beautiful you are. In the end, we all want the same things. We were talking about it earlier. We all want companion. We all want a family. We all want to be happy. And I think you don't think that as, like us. <laughs> yeah, and, but women, that's our role in the family. Mm -hmm. Whatever situation you're in, that's your role is to have kids and raise your children. And I think that's a basic, fundamental desire. So I think when it's taken from you, whether it's you know born like that or <clears throat> It, you feel like you're less than, even though you may not have anything to do with it. It's just what it is. I don't know. That's just how I feel. So, do you do? You, are you okay with? Is gonna be a donor? Do you think that's gonna fulfill you? I think. Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I think my desire to have a family is more important than the desire for the child to be biologically mine. Okay. You know, I, I feel like whether it's this venue or adoption or however we end up being a family, you know, Rodney and I are our own family, but it's just an extension of us. And I think that I will be satisfied. I think I won't be satisfied if it doesn't happen. <laughs> but I think, you know, having it, it just for us is, feels right in the next step. Okay, so um, do you consider adoption an option also? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's in a, it's definitely on the list of desires, but 
a lot of people don't realize how expensive adoption is. You know, private adoption is money. Uh, everything is money. Everything is money. <laughs> you know, you see all these kids in, on, on the internet and you're like, wow, like there's so many kids who need parents. And then you go to figure it out and you're like, oh, it costs $30,000 to have that child. And, you know, I, we looked at foster care. Um, my husband's uh, family's familiar with foster care. His grandmother was a foster mom for a lot of years. And a lot of the children that are in foster care are sick. Exactly. And they need a lot of love and a lot of attention and a lot of long-term care and that's difficult in and of itself yes it's difficult in and of itself you know so it's definitely up there it's definitely up there we would do pretty much anything <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, what um, what do you know about the process of donating the egg so um, egg donation, basically, there's a lot of agencies, believe it or not, that you can, of course, the internet, you can go online and you can put like egg donation and they're agencies that will do the whole process with you. They'll do all the legal, because there's a lot of legal stuff that goes with it when you're doing an egg donor, because I think you have to have a lot of respect for these women, even though they do get a fee for it. I mean, that's their egg and yes. you have to have the mentality that it's not your child to do that and I think that's tough for a lot of people yeah you know when we were reading about you today my office and I and um, we researched the egg donation mm -hmm. and they, they actually have to see a, a psycho mm -hmm. psychologue I don't know how to pronounce that like word. a psychiatrist they have yeah to because see a it's actually a very painful mm -hmm. things to do yes. they basically it, scrape yeah they Your have ovaries. to go in. <laughs> I mean, it's a surgical procedure. Yeah. You have to be put asleep. They, you know, take the follicles. But I think they also do the psych the psychological part of it because it is a mental thing. Yeah. You know, we have to do it as well on our end. Mm -hmm. You know, can you love a child? Can you give up a child that it, you know is mm -hmm. yours but is not going to be raised by you? That's an ultimate sacrifice of love for anybody to do you know that's true so you have to think these women who give up their children for adoption how much do they love their children that they want them to have a better life that's like an ultimate sign of I just want my child to have more but an egg donor they don't see any of that you know they're really doing it to help better a couple to help give that fulfill a dream for somebody amazing yeah. it's a beautiful gift <laughs> hi everybody thank you for joining i just want to remind you please like the live share the live today we're talking about infertility paula counsel she is on a journey to okay. have a baby yeah. maybe triplets maybe <laughs> and then today she is sharing that with us so when you think of yourself as a mother mm. <laughs> share with me some funny things the do's and don't what is something you will absolutely oh <laughs> not my child you know you know what every single body that i know in my life who has kids are like yeah that's what you say <laughs> you have a kid. then it's going to be totally different um i don't know the most important thing is going to be probably school for me uh -huh. and not being materialistic because that's important i think that I know how my husband is, and he's going to want them to have every shoe, sneaker that's been off the runway right on their feet. And I'm like, can't they just get feelers from Kohl's? Like, why does it have to be like that? But school, I think, is the most, is probably the thing I'm going to be the hardest on, because you can't do anything if you're not educated. You need, you need a, a balance. He's definitely the balance. Yes. Because I'm definitely, like, the one who's going to be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to be like, eh. Me, I think... I will have a problem with sleepovers. I don't know. Well, you have to be careful now. With yes. Too. And, and you know what's funny? Yeah. I was raised where my dad really trusts me. And I remember some of my friends, their dad were really strict. Yeah. And I remember thinking, oh my God, why are you so strict? Oh. We cannot go sleepovers. I'm sleeping over. <laughs> well, my dad was strict though, so I understand. <laughs> I had that dad. And then, uh -huh. now... I'm like, now I understand. Now you understand. No sleepovers. Listen, my dad was so strict. When I went to college, my dad got a job at my college. Are you serious? I promise you. Oh, my so God. He could, and he expected me to go eat with him every day. 
<laughs> he wanted to know where I was. Are you I, serious? I promise you. That's how strict my dad was. He, I you went really away. went there. Yes, I went away to college about an hour away. And my freshman year, I was fine. And my sophomore year, my dad got it. <laughs> <laughs> so he could keep an eye out, he said. Oh, my Because he didn't trust God. people. And he literally worked there. The, and well, I did go to college for free, so thank you. But <laughs> um, he literally did that. So I hope I'm not that kind of parent. I hope I have a little more lenience for that. Yeah, but, but when you think about it, you know, when, when you, you have kids with such a good heart, it's true there's people out there, yeah. you know, you, 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 t you tend to be really protective. Yeah, I think it's hard now, especially with social media and the internet. Tell and me about it. Kids have everything on their fingertips now. They hear something, they're Googling it. They see something, they're YouTubing it. <laughs> I mean, you can't get away with anything. They know everything. And, you know, when you were eight, when I was eight, I was playing with Barbie dolls. And now they're on an iPad not looking up and you're like... I'm here. Do you want to go outside? <laughs> do you want to do something? And they're like, no. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, what is, so when you say school, do you already think in your head, oh, I want him to be a lawyer? Uh, her, uh, him, him, her. her. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not big on, and I know this sounds crazy, I, I'm, you know, oh, you have to be a doctor. Oh, you have to be a lawyer. I honestly don't. If you want to be an electrician, if you want to be blue collar, I just want them to be successful in whatever they choose to do and do it well. You no. know, just don't, you know, be a bum working at McDonald's at 40, you know, be <laughs> the best bum working at McDonald's at 40. Like, it's just, <laughs> you know, I think differently in that way, but I'm also more uh, like um, emotional. I live on my emotions more, like not as black and white as a lot of people. So. I, I totally agree. I think that you should be the best at what you want to do. Yep. And it could be very simple, yep. but when you put a lot of passion and you, you want to be the best, yep. anything that you do can become something big. It can be beautiful, and it can be beautiful. And I feel like so many people, and I hate to use the word waste because it's never a waste to be educated, it's never a waste to be a doctor or a lawyer, but you know, you spend your life to be something that somebody expects you to be and you don't really live your life and you're not happy. And, you know, working, I work in oncology and seeing what I see in patients of all ages, you know, being diagnosed and sick and you, life is short. That's life right. is short. Let's see a couple of those comments. So we have Medina, she oh. said, I feel like parents are becoming less strict yes. when they should be more strict. Yes. Kids are too advanced these days with the internet and oh, okay, oh, yeah. so she thinks like us. <laughs> yeah. Well, too many parents want to be friends now. Do you know yes. they, want to, they want to be my they, best friend? Yes, they, they forget about yes, the parenting. The parenting part. Yeah. And I think friendship comes with age. You know, you become friends with your parents when you're older. I think they, they, they confuse being able to communicate and friends. Yeah. Because I remember that um, my parents communicates with me like mm -hmm. my dad was a great communicator mm -hmm. but he was not my friend <laughs> you made it clear, right? okay um call christian is saying can i be just happy and not have the work part <laughs> what <laughs> what that's supposed to mean <laughs> you need to do both <laughs> Kassan, God favor me, say, my mother was super strict with me, but my brother could do whatever he wanted. Ah, oh, those double standards. The hypocrisy of it all. Hypocrisy. That, that, I think that's a subject on its own. Yes. But we are living in a society. I don't agree with double standard, agree. but we are living in a society that is double standard. Yes, absolutely. And the truth is you want to set up yourself for success. Yep. So I, I'm a big, like, advocate that you should not try to please the society. Yeah. But I understand that you are living within the society. So yeah. unless you can go live on the moon on your mm -hmm. own. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You go. There are rules and the, regulations in society. The world is double standard. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what? I do think that growing up, there is a double standard. I grew up, my brothers can do whatever they want. Yes, that's Haiti for you I'm too. Gonna, oh, well, I'll give you an example. Rodney and I, we met, we were in our 30s, and I brought him for the first time to meet my parents, and we couldn't stay in the same room. 
and I'm 34. What? I, well, I didn't mean you could. <laughs> we could not stay in the same room. I He had to sleep on the couch and I had to sleep in the, the guest bedroom. My younger brother um, has a girlfriend and she sleeps over if she wants. And I'm like, what? You, what? Know, you know what I never understood with those double standards? Oh, yes. Is when they allowed their son to do something with another girl, like yeah. for example, your brother that yeah. bring that girl at the house. Yeah. What about if it was your daughter? So why is okay another daughter can yeah. do that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. It's, so it's the mind frame of the. Uh, maybe it's a generational thing. Maybe it's a cultural thing because you know I'm Hispanic. Um, but that's that's the way they think. Men, it's it's okay for a man to be a womanizer or bring women in and out and have them sleep over, but a girl. No. Let me tell you, Absolutely my, my family, we were a lot of cousins, so we could not go out without each, each other. Yeah. We were like about 14 cousins. Oh, yep. <laughs> so if you wanted to get one of us. You had to get over there. Yeah, I you need to, to get to everybody my out. Sister. Yeah, I, yeah. My dad would, oh, if my sisters had a date, I would have to go be the chaperone. I was like nine, but <laughs> I had to go. <laughs> yes, I was the chaperone yeah. because I was the oldest oh, one. So you were Yesterday, they were joking about that, and they, they, they said, Kaolan, She's not gonna say what you're doing, but do not ask her to lie. <laughs> <laughs> she, as I always say, yeah. if you don't want to do something that I'm not supposed to talk about, do not do it in front of me. Exactly. Because as soon as my parents ask me, I will tell the truth. I know I do the same. <laughs> so they Can't didn't like it. me too much. <laughs> They wanted you to lie and cover for them. No, they didn't like me at all. I can't tell oh, you that much. <laughs> but it is what it is. Yep, exactly. So during the journey, can you share with us um, a funny story that something funny during, you know, during That's your not my search? Everyday life. <laughs> during the search that happened life. to you. You know, it's like everything is funny because if you don't laugh, God, mm -hmm. you cry. You know, so <laughs> I'm blessed enough to have be married to my best friend who oh, makes me laugh like nobody else i'm blessed to have friends that make me laugh and keep me focused so i feel like is anything particularly funny no because like it's not funny but you still laugh because if not you cry and who wants to cry all the time nobody wants to be the person who cries all the time <laughs> so, or be friends with the person who cries all the I time. Know, you know? i know i know i know it's like when you go out and have drinks and you have the one friend that cries every time she has a couple drinks and you're like oh god oh my god you don't want to be that person so. my grandmother uh -huh. every time she get drunk she would ask for a cat <laughs> <laughs> the cat that just always asking what's my cat my cat See? <laughs> to laugh when it's funny because if you don't laugh when it's funny you know you never get through any tough situation so to go back to to this journey um guys mm -hmm. um paola has a gofundme page i think yeah. that we shared it so if you if you can help to make her dreams come Thank true you. to have triplets, <laughs> triplets. <laughs> like um we can all we can all pitch in did you put the gofundme page okay mm -hmm. um so we will be sharing it and and pinning the comment i think we can do let's see what else <laughs> my sister said um about her kid i am not your friend you have school for friends <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. What do you talk about? You don't talk about the same women things that you would talk about with your girlfriends, but that's the generation. Yeah, now. because because I think I think you can be friends with your children. Yeah. But best friend because a best friend, you can say anything yeah. and you need to be not judgmental. Exactly. And I cannot be agreeing with everything exactly. because my role I think my role as a parent oh. is to okay. Oh. So the nice agent what? What? just donated five hundred dollars to the triplets. No. <laughs> Stop! Congratulations! Oh my God! That really? That thank you, yeah. thank you. Oh, okay. I don't. I get all. 
Yeah. I'm not good at that part. The emotional part? <laughs> no, I'm not good at that part. <laughs> Accepting. I'm never good. It's like, thank you so much. Love Can you. she get a hug at this? Okay. Oh, oh we hugging? I hug. Is it a lot? <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Oh my God. Well. That was amazing. Thank you so much. I don't think people realize like when people are generous you know and to take generosity is is difficult for me personally um but I, we're very grateful for everybody who has donated um and i i don't know there's just the words are like ugh. it's difficult actually that remind me of an exercise that i did mm -hmm. and the exercise is you need to be two people mm -hmm. and then one person you cannot say anything except thank you Mm. And I have to tell you good stuff about yourself. Oh, and that was so difficult. So hard. Because a lot of people cannot accept compliments. Yep. And and but that and was that was an amazing you. Yeah. Just <laughs> saying thank you. No, I was like that for <laughs> yeah. years. So you're not allowed to give back because you know some people if you say something, they say something back yeah. to you. You're not allowed to yeah. give back nothing. You just need to receive oh. and say thank you. Thank no. you. I think you have to be an extremely secure person to just receive all the time. And I think overall we're just not secure people in a lot of ways. So I know me, like people think I'm so confident or this or that. And I'm like, God, I can't say just thank you. I'll be like, oh, but I like your hair too. Yeah, exactly. That's what they don't want you to do. They want you oh. to accept and then just accept. And there was another one where you're supposed to just look in, in, into each other's eyes for like, I take one minute or two minutes Ooh. and not say anything. Oh, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> that's uncomfortable. <laughs> Like how do you just, is it somebody you know or No, 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 no. It's just a group of people that, oh, that, that, that was a, like um, a support group. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. And so you just stare, like if we stared right now at each other and we couldn't like I'll, I'll always laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. I think we just have to learn how to say thank you. Yes. Like, yes. You know, or make an ex not make an excuse too. Like, oh no, it was nothing. Or, you know, just say, okay. Oh, I don't know. Well, Paula, that is so... Guys, are you sharing the live? Who mm -hmm. wants to win the electricity bill paid today? It mm -hmm. doesn't matter which state you are. As long as you're in the United States, we can pay that electricity bill. So I want to share with you guys, if it's your first time watching Tax with Alaco today, why we pay the electricity bill. So, yeah. one evening... Carl here was coming from the hospital where his wife just had his daughter. Mm -hmm. And then they go home and there's no light. Mm -hmm. And it's a Friday. <laughs> okay? So, um, FPL is closed. We cannot call. They're not going to reconnect mm -hmm. that thing. And you have a newborn that's just mm -hmm. one or two day old. So, that was a traumatic experience. But yeah. from that day, he promised himself that that would never happen again. But also, we, we would like to give back mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people that you don't know that their light is going to be cut off tomorrow yeah. and they don't talk about it. Yeah, exactly. and, and, and this is the thing. People think that tragedy is when something big happens. Yeah. But there's those little things that look small. It's a big thing. Yes. It's a big thing not having electricity. Exactly. You need it for everything in your house. So that's how we... That's awesome. Crying baby. That's a crying baby, no electricity. That's crazy. But that's most... You know what? A lot of people have those issues. They, they are struggling, you know? And But it pushed him to never happen again. <laughs> so yeah, it they, might at the time been like the worst thing, but then it ended up being the best thing. Exactly. It's all about perspective and what you do from it. It's all about what you do for it. That's from true. the experience. Exactly. You know? There's always a way that you can you can make that. That, that remind me of one of my favorite story. There was a guy, and he was always trying. He, he see every positive aspect of all situation. Mm -hmm. So one day he had a, a convenience store, and they were robbing the store, mm. and the, um, the robber <laughs> shot him. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they told him, and the person that was interviewing him said, so what were you thinking while you were mm -hmm. on the floor, you know, you have yeah. bullets in you? And he said, I was thinking, 
I live a good life. <laughs> <laughs> he said something positive <laughs> because the guy was like, finally, he was going to say something, something negative. <laughs> and he said, maybe those people that robbed me, they needed that money more than me. Oh, him. my God. <laughs> Shot. Yeah, so that that proves you that there's always all about something. aspects, all how you perceive things. Yeah. yeah. So I think to to summarize, guys, do your homework. Yeah. Even if you were born that way, that's not the end of the story. No. It's never the end of the story until you decide it's the end of the story. Yeah. So oh. do your research. Um, and don't get discouraged because it's going to happen that things are going to happen that can discourage you. There's going to be a lot of bumps in anything that you do. So tell me one of those things that can discourage you. Um, you know, realizing something is in your grasp and literally it be a financial situation that holds you back. Yeah. And then you think about all the things that you could have done differently. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, five years ago to be better so you wouldn't have to worry about it. You know, I think, oh, wow, like, what if I had invested differently or if I had gone further even in school and make more money, like, I could just go do this. This wouldn't even be a, an issue. Um, but I realized in talking to some of my friends and my family that that's you can't say what if. You can't go back and you can't change anything. Y you can't. You have to keep pushing, you know, when we decided to do this, you know, we were like, okay, are we going to get in debt? Are we going to, and you know, it's not guaranteed. That's the other thing. People think mm. that, oh, you pay this money and you do this process and it's guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed, nothing. So, you know, we could have done all that and still not have a family. So you go on faith, <laughs> you go on faith. Yeah. That's it. You That's know? beautiful. Um, so I'm going to ask the team back there. Oh, thank you, Shirley Sano. Um, <clears throat> do, do you have any comments you want to share with us? We're good? <laughs> that was an amazing oh. conversation, by the way. I could oh. talk to you all night Me long. <laughs> but we do have a time frame yeah. to end um, the show. Um, it was very great having you that here. Was so great, thank you. <laughs> So, um, guys, this is the time to choose the winner uh -oh. who's going to have their life be paid today. So, what number are you thinking about? Um, 196. 196. Why? I like, I like <laughs> an, any number with six. So, it was uh -huh. 96, 66. <laughs> six is my favorite. This is, this is funny because some people are superstitious about six. I, I remember the other day I was doing somebody taxes and the the the, the result was six thousand six hundred and sixty six. Oh, free. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. no, we're gonna add a dollar, <laughs> take out a dollar, and we're not again, gonna have all the six. I think six is good luck. Yeah. I was born on the six. So was my friend. Was yeah. Born on the six. It can't get better than the day I was born. <laughs> <laughs> You were born in November, you're November baby? I'm November 6th. I'm oh, a you're Scorpio. a Sagittarius? I'm a Scorpio. Oh. A you don't look like a Scorpio. Oh, didn't. It's so all Scorpios ass. are B-I-T-C-A. Sorry, oh. guys. She's right. She's 100% right. But you, you, you're so sweet. Oh. <laughs> you might want to call some of my family and ask them that yeah. question. <laughs> you know, I think when we are loyal, we love, and we like you, forget it. We'll be the best thing that ever happened. If we're not and we don't like you, you don't exist. Mm. That's Scorpio. <laughs> That's that Scorpio side of me. And then I want to make you cry a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm moving away from that as I get older. I'm moving away from that as I get older. Oh my God. <laughs> so who is the winner? I mean, the first time we're having a winner. What? Yeah. So you're going to have to choose another number because we cannot not have a winner. We always pay somebody's bill. Pick another six. Another six. <laughs> <laughs> What's my, my frame again? Just pick a number. Six. <laughs> like it? No, six. <laughs> because six is us commenting at yeah, the beginning. Like 66? <laughs> pick a number. Oh,
Who is number 66? 66. 66. Shirley Sano. Woo! <laughs> that makes me so happy, Cheryl. <laughs> so you know that person? We know that person. Oh, yes. I love when my I, guests yes. know the wiener. That's so surprising. I'm so happy. So, Cheryl? Cheryl. Cheryl, you have Cheryl. 24 Cheryl. hours Cheryl. to oh, um, inbox us your light bill, your most recent light bill your last part of your social security and the phone number associated with the light and we will call and pay your electricity bill awesome guys thank you so much thank you, thank you <laughs> it so was much. great having you here it was great having was you so Paula. Great <laughs> and then um i cannot wait so when you have the babies we're going to bring you back we'll here bring you back. so we can you, you know see the babies <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a great night. Have a good night. Stay blessed with your family. Tax yeah. fit, love you. <laughs>